Hunters, how are you today? First of all, I just want to thank every one of you guys from my previous video who has given me so much support on the fact that I'm ill and wishing me a speedy recovery. I am so, so grateful for your kindness and just like being okay with me, being not 100% myself. On to the topic of today's video itself. This video is a collaboration between myself and Shade from Sadie Saves the Day. We've been talking a lot about colors in the comment sections in my color showdown video, and we decided to do a collaboration where we did a paint swap. This is also my first collaboration, so yay! So we decided to swap some paints, and this is her package to me. I'm already excited because she's so adorable and painted these blue clouds all over the envelope, front and back. This is the back, front has my dress, which has cheered me up no end. So I'm gonna open the package with you guys and see what's inside and then do some swatching. So Shade from Sadie Saves a Day is a fellow YouTuber and her videos are brilliant because they go into real details. I've learned so much about colors and paints and she does beautiful portraits and she goes into details of what paints she uses to create lots of different skin tones. So if you're reading into your portraits, your paints, your colors, your color theories, then I highly, highly recommend you go and check out her channel. We are also both on Patreon and I'll leave the link down below for both our patrons because your support on Patreons really help us gather more art supplies to show you guys and to share with fellow artists. This was what was in the package and I can already see that Shade has been super, super generous and sent me way more than we talked about. There is a Duplo snack, which I tried this while I was traveling through Europe and I really like it, even though I'm allergic to nuts. I do like this and I do sometimes occasionally take the risk. So thank you, I will try this as soon as my diet comes back to something resembling normal and I can have chocolate again. She also sent me this really interesting pen called Candy Craft, which is candy filled pens and it looks like you can draw with the pen on this paper and eat both. That is fascinating. Thank you. I had no idea this kind of things existed. She also sent me a pencil with cute little washi tapes wrapped around it so that I can use the washi tapes and the pencil. This is such a great way of sharing washi tapes. I never thought of this to wrap it around pencils because then you get two things that are useful. Thank you. Ooh, tea. Oh, that smells amazing. Lemon and ginger, that's perfect, thank you. Ginger is so great for my health condition right now. And so this tea, oh, it smells so good. They, I wish this was like a bath bomb because that would be an amazing bath. But thank you, this smells amazing. I am totally gonna enjoy this, thank you so much. Now I'm guessing the rest are paints, so I'm gonna bring the camera in and uh, we can take a closer look at them. So first up, she has very generously included a whole tube of core watercolour in Viridian Green. She didn't tell me she was going to send me a whole tube of core watercolour. So thank you so much. Wow. Wow. Thank you. That is so generous. Next, she has sent me some Serpentine Genuine Daniel Smith colour sticks, which I'm really interested in trying because I've never tried these sticks before. I've always been unsure about how good they will be to rewet, so this actually will be a fantastic time to try. I've never tried them before and I don't have any serpentine genuine other than from the dot card, so thank you so much. This is going to be so much fun to try. She also made me dot cards of the Schmincke Special Edition. Now, she has done a video about this, which I will link down below, where she reviews these paints. And I know that they're basically a bit like the Primatech range. It's only through that video that I actually knew that these paints existed. It was a special edition, a limited edition, and it's no longer available. And she has very, very generously shared some with me. So we will have a look at those in a 
bit. She has also sent me a dot card of the Hushwing watercolours. I think she just did a video about this on her channel and it is a handmade watercolour paint so it will be really interesting to try a handmade watercolour paint from someone new. She has also very kindly cut huge chunks of the Caran d'Ache Neo Colour 2 which is a water soluble crayon in several colours so this will be fun to try. Wow she has sent me 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 half pounds of cork watercolours. I have never tried coral. I am actually going to be popping my cork cherry on camera in front of you guys. Who knew this channel was going to take such a turn so quickly? Because coral is very, very expensive, I would never ask anybody to send me coral. But Shade said she really, really wanted to send me these because she wanted to see how I would like them. So she has sent me a huge range of colours for me to try. So thank you so much for your generosity, Shadi. I am gonna really, really love trying these out. She has also sent six M. Graham colours and a Daniel Smith Geotide Primatec half pan as well. And I'll go through what each of these colours are as I swatch them for you. This is the last part of the package and I'm not quite sure if I want to open it because it's so beautifully wrapped with wax seals of sakura and uh, yeah I think I think I might cut this bit off and then try and save the rest of the wrapping because it's so beautiful. So by the looks of it this is ooh lots of gouache Ooh, I like this palette. It's nice and deep. So I am guessing... Schmincke Horror Dam Zinc White, Schmincke Academy Titanium White, M. Graham Lamp Black, Schmincke Academy Lemon Yellow, M. Graham Gamboge, M. Graham Napsal Red, M. Graham Quinacodon Rose, M. Graham Ultramarine Blue, M. Graham Thalo Blue, and M. Graham Thalo Green. So I am definitely thinking this is gouache because Quinacton Rose is and Thalos are usually very transparent and these aren't, so they must be gouache. Ooh. I've not had much experience with gouache, so this is gonna be fun. Thank you so much, and this case is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch all the paints for you now. I've created these swatching sheets and I've made big black lines down. And the reason why I have much thicker black line than everyone else is because I'm particularly interested in seeing exactly how transparent or opaque a certain color is. And just having this much wider black line helps me see that more easily. We do have quite a few paints to swatch. It's gonna be quite relaxed and chatty and you can just watch me paint as I chat about each color or each paint brand or anything else and we are going to start off with Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2. Now, I have used Neo Colors before, I have a set, however I've never thought to put it like this and use it almost like the Daniel Smith color stick, like in fact until Sadie sent it to me like this I never equated the two together but basically it's the same thing isn't it so I know how they work as a crayon they're fantastic I love using them as crayons but it's really interesting to use it just as a watercolor thing that's a nice I would say mid yellow it's not like ice cold cool yellow and it's not like orangey warm either onto the orange i have to say it is quite fun to just have it stuck down what shade has done is stick it down with like a circular double-sided sticker kind of thing so you can just use this like a watercolor pan almost
I am using the Skoda Ultimo in size 10. I am loving, loving this brush so much. It just soaks up so much water and it creates such nice smooth washes. I've been using it every chance I get. And my um, poor Proline Plus brushes, I haven't, been, haven't had much of a look in since these these came to the house so this is the brown a little bit lighter than i expected i did pre-wet these but it's still quite light it's not like pr 101 where you get really thick intense color of brown next one is going to be scarlet I wonder if it's just that this brush holds so much water that when I touch the Neo color, it just gets so much water added to them. I've decided to change up the brush to the Proline Plus just because I'm slightly concerned that the Ultimo is actually putting too much water into the mix and making them th quite thin. I'll give it a go with this Proline instead for couple colors and see how we go. Now, I don't know about you, but I would call this more magenta than purple, but it's still a really nice color. On to the violet. Protein Plus definitely doesn't hold as much water in which a lot of the time it's kind of good for me because I really like to get intense colors and yes you can get nice strong colors on the big moppy brush too but then you end up using a lot of paint as well, just because each brush load has so much water in. This is, oh no, that's better, cobalt blue. I will put a scan of all of these swatches that I'm gonna do today onto my Patreon page for my patrons and it will be available for anyone who basically pledges any amount of money because because I share these scans on the $1 tier. On the $1 tier you get scans and sneaky peeks and behind the scenes which is probably going to be a lot of messy studio to be honest. That's the emerald green. That's a nice bright green. It's almost a mum green, but not quite. No, no, black, no, come back. Black has come off its uh, glue thing and it's rolling everywhere and it's uh, turning everything else black. That's gonna have to do. Oh wow, yeah, that's quite strong. They are very smooth, non-granulating colors. So if you like flat washes with no, nothing fancy happening and you want control of, of everything, then this is a great way. So that is the Caran Dash Neo Color 2 used like a watercolor stick. And it was great fun. It is, it's not as tinted as you know, professional watercolors, but for something that is as versatile as it being a crayon and watercolor, it's pretty good. And certain colors are pretty strong, like the emerald green, and yellow was surprisingly quite strong, as well as the cobalt blue. Let's go on to the next one and let this one dry. We have the gouache. 
we have 10 colors and they are in this palette and what I'm gonna do is just give the whole palette a quick little spritz just to reactivate them so this gouache palette that she's put together for me is a mix of brands of Schmincke and M. Grand. I have to say, A, I have very little experience in gouache. I've only used white and gold gouache from Winsor Newton. The white gouache was great. The gold gouache was disappointing, hard to rewet. You get very little color payoff and I kind of stopped there. I've been wanting to start gouache and she either, I've either mentioned it and she has a really good memory or she is just psychic that she sent me gouache because yeah, I have to admit I was at a stage where I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll start gouache when I get some and then with no real plan of getting any. So I've never tried gouache from either of these brands. But I have tried both of these brands for watercolours. I like both of them. Um, they both have their pros and cons. Schminke, I'm, I don't know if I've just had bad luck and bad choices in terms of the colours I've chosen. But I usually find them quite hard to re-wet and you don't get that much of a colour payoff. So I've only got one. Oh wow, this is really, really dark black. It's nice. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, colour payoff for Schmincke. So the only colour I have on my palette is the Ultramarine Violet. And that's because you have to actually be very careful which Ultramarine Violet you pick to actually properly cancel out your yellow. Schmincke's Ultramarine Violet was the easiest one I could get hold of. Okay, let's try that. It's a very, very vivid cool yellow and then as for M. Graham I have the watercolors and um, they're fine they're fine they, they're good but compared to Daniel Smith I'm like mm, it's just ever so slightly not as good as Daniel Smith it's good watercolors and if you can get hold of them a reasonable price like if you're in American stuff then I would hide oh I like that orange over here M grams I think are like a pound or two cheaper and for that price difference I'd rather go for the Daniel Smith because you know me I love Daniel Smith can I just say this this color happening here is insane just red but I know I gave some to Dan to try because he is on a shopping band and um, I know he really liked it so it just depends on what kind of art you're into and I did try to paint two paintings side by side of M. Graham's and Daniel Smith because I bought very similar colours and I just found that the Daniel Smith painting was much brighter than the M. Graham's the way I paint I'm really loving this Napsol Red though it is like wow red it is like it should be in a fairy tale somewhere as a central focus it is a little red riding hoods hood kind of red it's amazingly bright it's a shame it's a gouache and opaque because if this was a transparent watercolor and properly transparent then i would have not hesitated to add this to my palette now queen rose i get picky about queen rose and this is M. Graham's Queen Rose. As you all know, I love Dana Smith's Queen Rose more than any other colour in the world. If I could take a bath in a bathtub full of Queen Rose, I wouldn't take a bath, but I would take the bath with me home so that I had that much Queen Rose at home. I've tried M. Graham's Queen Rose and it's close, but I've never... It's not as nice as the Daniel Smith one, but the difference is so um, subtle that 
I can't put it into words why I prefer Daniel Smith's. I just instinctively know it's still the right one for me. Having said that, this Quinacta Rose is nice. Ultramarine Blue. Now, you know I'm obsessed about Ultramarine Blues right now. Well, to be fair, to be specific, it's one blue in particular, and that's Dan's Blue. And if you don't know what Dan's Blue is, it's Ultramarine Blue that is handmade by... Dan from Penholder Art UK and if you haven't heard of that before welcome to the channel obviously this is your first time on my channel because I think I mention Dan's Blue every single time I make a video it's one of my main colors on my palette as well so I get really picky about ultramarine blue because I used to hate it so much because I find um, they usually really hard to rewet and you get very little colour payoff. But I have to say, I am impressed with this ultramarine blue. Again, shame it's a gouache. By the way, if it is your first time, then uh, please hit subscribe and the notification bell button so that you don't miss out on the next episode. The colour showdown will be back, by the way, guys. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about it. The reason why I didn't do it this time is because I am still under the weather. I'm I'm very foggy at the moment. I'm going through that phase of chronic illness where I've been sleeping four hours a night every night, whereas I usually like a good seven to eight hours. Wow, that is amazing. Why are you a gouache and not a transparent watercolor? And my observation skills aren't as good as they normally are, and my descriptive skills and as good as they normally are, such as I just keep going, wow, these are really nice and bright, rather than actually give you some useful information. But I can tell you that this is a thalo blue yellow shade, or I think they call it green shade in other brands. I just know that it's yellow shade in the Holbein range. That is an amazing and intense. These are absolutely amazing colors, and I can totally see why I've heard many people say good things about M. Graham's gouache because they are beautiful colours. Really intense. And they dry thoroughly, which is weird because M. Graham's watercolour doesn't dry at all. The ultramarine blue had completely dried and, you know, came off the palette and things, so I'm guessing that the gouache dries quite easily and thoroughly. They are beautiful. I don't think they're particularly opaque. I mean, these aren't totally dry yet, but I wouldn't call this very opaque. Do you know what I mean? I just had this understanding in my head that gouaches tend to be really opaque, whereas these aren't that opaque. They would be classified as opaque if they were watercolors, but as an opaque medium, I'm quite surprised at how transparent they are. Nice stuff. So that is the gouaches all swatched up. I have to say I am very, very impressed with the M. Grahams. Not as impressed with the Schminkes. I don't know what it is about Schminkes. I don't know if I just have really bad lacks with them, the colors I encounter, but I really like these strong, bright colors. So, I'm a big fan of the M. Grams. When I'm ready to go into gouache, I think I might have to pick up some of their gouache and I just have to hope that we can get them over in the UK. I know we can get watercolours by M. Graham now. Not sure if the same shop does the gouache. Wow, yeah, no, I'm really impressed with the colour payoff of these. And can I just say, I know it's, it hasn't dried yet, but amazing texture. Ooh, I'm definitely going to have fun, especially playing with these two, I think. It's very expressive. Next up, I am going to swatch for you guys the Hushwing handmade paints. And this is going to be interesting because I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm not familiar with browns and ochres. I used to say I don't like browns and ochres, but I am actually coming around to it, especially after having done the colour showdown series. And doing the colour showdown has taught me that browns and ochres can actually be very beautiful and very useful for mixing as well. 
So I am looking forward to learning more about ochres and browns with this dot card. That's, that's what I meant to say with the colour showdown. It will be back as soon as my brain fog nest phase has lifted because I know the series is really important to a lot of people and I want to give it my best shot at the final two episodes, particularly because I'm really excited about the colours I've chosen for them. Hopefully, uh, and hopefully that means it will be back in the next week. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see how I recover or not recover or... So I'm just gonna, uh, wrong brush. I'm just going to wet all of these. These are handmade and I will link down below to the video where Sade reviews these paint. Oh wow, Prussian blue. Oh, I remember now. This is the one with the insane Prussian blue. Oh, I am looking forward to this. Thank you for sending me this, Sade. Okay, let's try this. First, we have Cypress Jarosite. And if you want to find out more about each of these pigments, then totally check out her video on this because there's all like the pigment info and stuff on it and what the brand is and where you can get them and stuff. I'm not going to steal her links and stuff. Okay. Quite light. This one. The paper I'm using is my usual Fabriano Academia that I get in a pad of 100. Which, by the way, if you are in the UK or Europe, because they do ship it to anywhere in Europe, and you want to get this pad or just anything art related, Cass. This video is going out on Saturday, hopefully, of the 5th of May. And that just gives you a couple days to make the most of Cass Arts sale. And they do this sale periodically where you get a certain amount of money off, depending on how much money you spend. There's like three ranks. And the top rank is that if you spend Basically, if you put £250 worth of stuff in the basket, then you get £50 off, which works out, I think, to be 20% off, which is an amazing deal. Because Casa, I've done the price comparisons for a lot of paints across several UK websites that sell art supplies, and they're only a smidge more expensive, like a few pennies normally more expensive than Jackson and then for them to take 20% off that is amazing and what I tend to do is if I have colours that I really fancy getting but not urgently then I keep a list of the colours I want to buy when the sale goes on and it went on this morning and we are on Friday the 4th so I did put a little order in so if you want 20% off your art supplies, they do Daniel Smith, Winsor Newton, Sminke, Old Holland, Quall, for watercolours anyway. Uh, lots of different watercolour paper. Wait, if I move on, that colour, really amazing. It really wet really well. You can see the difference in intensity, like between these two and then these two. Back to cast art. They will ship anywhere in... Woo! No, not Casa. Let's talk about this. Look at this. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. That kind of red I do like. Woo! I guess this is like Indian red E. P.O. 101 E. 
colour. It's got the intensity of Sennelier's Caput Montmont, but it is more redder, whereas Caput Mortem is more violety in colour, but it has that same depth and richness of colour. This is the kind of colour I'm looking for. Right, so back to cast art, what I was saying was, if you want good art supplies, dead cheap, 20% off, then go ahead and skip over there. It isn't even an affiliate thing that I have with them. I just think their sale is a great value and it's on all things, not just like a particular brand, which is fantastic. So I always stock up on you know, like non-urgent watercolours, restocking my favourite colours, or just buying more of this paper. And this paper, it's, I mean, it's not the best paper in the world, but for things like this, and if you're a beginner, you're going to be using a lot of paper. And if you're like me, like to test out a lot of things, then this is such a great value. I couldn't afford to do all the testing and swatching and playing that I do without this paper because it's so affordable. It's like £21 for a pad of 100 Now this one went on just like Cabot Mortem did but it's drying completely differently. It's very granulated. It's actually quite fascinating. I'm getting really into granulating colours at the moment. I'm kind of sold on that already. So I'm very, very grateful for this pad. And that's £21, which optimistically I'm going to say $25 US before the 20% off. So it is quite awesome. And it just gives me the freedom to not worry about price and encourages me to play. And play is incredibly important in art certainly for me now i am looking forward to this prussian blue because i saw this being swatched Ooh. you know it's such a shame that prussian blue fades if you follow denise from in liquid color i'm sure you've heard by now that her life fastness test showed that prussian blue fades really really quickly and yes you can put them in the drawer in a dark place for a while and apparently the color comes back but that's not really practical for art if you want to sell it as something to hang on the wall but that is a very beautiful prussian blue it has it's kind of got like indigo -y color as a mass tone but then it has a very lovely like thalo blue yellow shady colour as you wash it out. I can feel my voice getting a little bit raw so apologies for my craggy voice. I am getting a little bit better though. I'm, I'm definitely a lot better than I was when I filmed my uh, Tiger Travel palette. I was at my worst then I think. Really struggling to string up sentences at that point was not fun. Yeah it's okay. I'm, I'm just um my art senses aren't refined enough to be able to appreciate very lightly tinted paints yet. I'm hoping that with practice and experience, I'll get to learn to appreciate them more. But for now, my eyes would definitely go that way rather than this way between the two. So that is the Hushwing watercolors swatched. It's interesting, there's just so many browns and once you swatch them, it's like, they are all different. And I'm sure once you mix them with other colors, you understand even more. And I'm sure once I mix these colors with other colors, like I've been doing with the color showdown, then I will start to understand more and more about why we have so many brown and ochre colors and what each of them are for. But for now, my favourite, I have to say, are the Colonial Red, the Colonial Violet and the Prussian Blue. As I said before, I will put scans of these once they dry on my Patreon page and I will leave a link to that down below. I will leave a link down below also for Shade's 
Patreon because she has a Patreon page too and she totally deserves your support as well. Next up are the M. Grahams and the Schmincke Special Edition ones. No, so this is my second go at trying out M. Grahams, see if I'm more impressed with these colours. M. Grahams are fantastic to rewet, you never have to worry about rewettability of M. Grahams because they never dry. And apparently, I've heard, they are quite a nightmare if you put them in a palette and then you decide to move them around, like a plastic palette or porcelain palette, because they're not solidify. With Holbein's and Daniel Smith's, they will dry up and then you can just peel them off, but not these. They apparently are quite a nightmare. So I never palleted mine because I do move my paints around very often. Well, that's definitely a very bright scarlet pyro. Shame I'm not the biggest fan of that kind of orange. It is a shame when you encounter an amazing colour, but it's your least favourite colour. I think I like orange even less than browns and ochres. At least with browns and ochres, I, I now understand their value and their importance and their beauty as well. But with oranges, partly it's because I just mix my own more often than not. But I don't know, just not not the biggest fan of orange. That ultramarine blue is nice. It's not dance blue though. It's funny in our household we have this thing now where it's like, yeah, it's nice, it's okay, but it's not dance blue, is it? On many things. Not even blue things, just anything now. So this is the thing I find with M. Grahams. They're nice. They're very, very easy to rewet, which is always nice. Nice bright colours, but when they dry, they're kind of missing something. Maybe they have such a big colour shift from when they're wet and when they dry that I get like sad. I don't know. They're 95% there, I reckon. But then just just missing that last five. And then M. Graham's raw umber. Really? It's um it's pale, isn't it? Okay, on to the special edition Schminke, and I have been super excited to try these. I know she only had a very small amount of lapis lazuli left, and she sent me some. Because she is an amazing human being. You can tell that she's an amazing human being from her videos, you know? You know when they just come across so genuine on their videos and you know that's what they're like. Next up. Very pale. Lapis Lazuli definitely gives you the better colour payoff. It's like a cooler Blue Appetite Genuine or um, Luna Blue, but it's much cooler. It's beautiful, the Lapis Lazuli. Lapis Lazuli, the original ultramarine blue. Eye watering expensive at the time. There is a fantastic um, documentary that BBC made by Dr. James Fox, who is one of my favorite art historian. And um, he did a series called History and Color or Three Colors. It's something about history and color. And it's a three part episode one is about white, one is gold, and one is blue. I want to say history and color stuff. I'll link, link the blue episode down below. But the blue episode actually shows you how they used to make the real ultramarine blue, which was made from lapis lazuli. And it's insane the amount of work that had to go into it. So I really do appreciate anyone that can still make a lapis lazuli paint obviously nowadays and especially in watercolor 
I've not come across anything that is really truly like that bright ultramarine anymore. That would also be an insanely expensive paint. But compared to the Daniel Smith one, this is the one. The Schmincke's one is so much better, I think. Shame we can't get them anymore. Right now on to the start of the course. Sorry if I'm starting to sound breathy, it's just trying to hold back the coughs. I have been coughing a lot, but through the magic of editing, you don't have to sit through me coughing. I am looking forward to this cough going permanently because I've had it for six months now. <laughs> and the coughing's not bad. Coughing you can get used to. It's the entire lack of sleep for a prolonged time that is hard. And also when your body just has enough and I've had several injuries just from coughing too much. And whenever I have a bad bout, I seem to ping something and injure myself, which just doubles the fun. So that is the mostly M. Graham and Schmincke page. The M. Grahams are actually starting to dry up brighter than I thought they were going to. But again, I'm not entirely sold on it. I'm liking the Indian yellow. That's very nice. It's a nice, warm, very vivid yellow. But the rest, I'm like, they're nice. But I know Daniel Smith's ones are nicer. Oh, except for the ultramarine blue, which obviously doesn't win on Dan's blue. But it is a nice ultramarine blue. If you can't get hold of, because they are handmade, then the M. Graham ultramarine blue is a nice, strong alternative. On to the final page. This is going to be the core page and I'm very excited to try this. Now core watercolour is interesting for me because before I got into watercolour I was heavily heavily into acrylics and in particular fluid acrylics. And so I and my favourite brand was Golden so I'm very familiar with their colours but in a acrylic range but it's quite nice to also see some names that I'm very very familiar with on here Ooh. that is like highlighter yellow intense wow now cork clearly dries out really nicely just like the Holbein's and the Daniel Smith which is always nice Wow, that's bright. Shade did a full, full review on the cores. And before I saw that video, I was like, I don't get cores. Why are they so expensive? You know, no watercolor needs to be that expensive. But watching her video, like, she really explained it so well on the characteristics of the core watercolors and the pros and cons on and why they are worth the money that Golden are charging for. It's definitely burn your eyes out kind of brightness. That is a nice permanent alizarin crimson. Quinn Magenta, oh my dear friend Golden Quinn Magenta, I used to use an awful lot of this colour when I was doing my acrylics. It will be super interesting to see if it's the same kind of colour as the one they have in the acrylics range. Hmm. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful Queen Magenta, but it's not quite the same as the acrylics Queen Magenta. Maybe that's because this is more transparent. I don't know. It's definitely beautiful, but definitely not the same. Dax is in purple, which is another colour I used to use a lot in my acrylic paintings. Again, very beautiful. Not quite the same. Maybe it 
is. This one's closer to the acrylic than the Quimagent is to their acrylic. Let's try their ultramarine blue. I'm always excited to try other companies ultramarine blue to see if any of them can beat Dan's blue. First impression, it's a lighter blue than Dan's blue. The Mastone doesn't quite have the same oomph that Dan's blue has. Sap green next. Ooh, now that is a sap green I do like. Ha! Huh. Denise, have you tried this sap green? The problem is I've not tried the original Daniel Smith sap green, so I never know whether it's close or not to what Denise is looking for. I just know that she's been searching high and low to find a perfect sap green replacement. Interesting. Have you tried this, Denise? If you have, let us know what you think of them and how close it is to the sap green you're looking for. Next up is Nickel Azul Yellow. They do re-wet quite well. I wouldn't say super well, but they do re-wet well. Like, it's not hard to get the pigment out of them or anything like that. Oh yeah, you are definitely an Azul Yellow for sure. Ooh, that is nice. That is a nice azo yellow. Like it should be this earthy kind of top mass tone and then like a highlight to burn your eyes out. Bright yellow. Queen Gold Deep next. Ooh. It's quite similar to Quinacridone Burnt Orange. I would say it's the middle between Diana Smith's Queen Gold and Diana Smith's Quinacridone Burnt Orange. They're all very bright colors. One thing I am noticing though with the core colors, maybe it's just this paper, but can you see how you get like dark dots? You don't really get that kind of texture these other colors so it must be the golden's aquasol working differently on this paper and I probably wouldn't recommend using core on this particular paper which is the Fabiano Academia because it is doing this weird patterny thing that's really interesting. Definitely worth testing core on different papers because if you're gonna pay the money that core is asking for for these, then you might as well get the right paper for them. Yellow ochre. It's a lovely soft yellow ochre. It's like a teddy bear. You know, like one of those fluffy teddy bears. It's that kind of yellow ochre. That's nice. Burnt sienna. Okay, nice. The browns seem to be nice, soft, not too bright, not inoffensive, not too ugly. They're all very pretty browns. And then last up for core is Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is an interesting colour, isn't it? So many browns have so many different versions. Nice. They all go on very smoothly and very evenly. So if you like nice even finish on your work, then Core might be a brand for you. But don't use the Fabiano Academia. Right, last two colors guys. Thank you so much for getting all the way through this. If you're still here. Sorry, I just made a mistake. I put Nickel Azo Yellow there instead of the Goethite. Strangely, I had no idea the Goethite was brown. I don't know why. I just had, it just sounded black. <laughs> it's entirely my misunderstanding, but um, still nice. All the Primatex are very interesting to watch them dry. 
and see how they turn out. I've been making these little mini abstracts and I'm finding that the Primatech paints will just make their own abstract painting all by themselves because they have so much texture and expression. So this, and I can totally see that this is already doing some very interesting, very beautiful granulating. Garthite though is going nuts on granulation. So if you like granulation, this is amazing. I'm looking forward to playing with this as a abstract painting. And finally, the Serpentite Genuine. Again, we'll see how this behaves. So this was the core plus a couple of Daniel Smith Primatech page. The cores, now that I have tried them, my first verdict is that I need to try them on lots of different papers. I think this paint in particular, and it's the first watercolor that I've ever seen it do, will get picky about what watercolor paper you use it on. Clearly it has expensive taste and my little Fabriana Academia paper isn't good enough for them. And so you can totally see on most colors, this granulate, not, it, it's not granulation. It gets probably, it feels like it just goes deep into the paper. You know, like when you overwork paper and it gets all patchy all of a sudden, it's like that. Only I haven't overworked this paper at all because I was just lightly swatching them. Definitely worth testing out your core paints on different paper if you get this kind of effect. Pretty sure you don't get it on every paper. The colours on this paper, which is clearly behaving like it doesn't want to be on it, is still very beautiful. It's very vivid. It's very representative of the golden brand in being very proud and working hard in creating beautiful, beautiful, bright, intense colours. I think Core is one of those brands, if you can afford it, it's a great brand to go for because it's always going to be reliable in terms of intensity, if you like bright colours. And they also go on very smooth. You just don't get the patchiness at all. I, in particular, love the yellow ochre because it's like a soft fuzzy teddy bear. I'm so, so glad I got to try them because they are so beautiful, but they were completely out of my price range to buy this many paints. So thank you so much, Shade, for sharing some of your core paints. It's incredibly generous of you. Thank you so, so much. On to the Gothite and Serpentine Genuine. As I said before, the Gothite is doing some crazy granulation. I am looking forward to trying this on some cold press or even rough paper and see how it reacts to that. Serpentine Genuine isn't granulating as much, but again, this is a very smooth paper. So we will see what that looks like on more textured papers. That was a lot of swatching and thank you for staying with me all the way to the end. I am just in love with these colors, particularly though the hush wing colors are beautiful. Like who knew browns could be so beautiful and also the quads and the Daniel Smiths, I think, are my favorite, plus the Schmincke Lapis Lazuli. Such a shame. Why do paint companies make limited edition paints? Just why? Don't, don't they know that we fall in love with them and then we want them forever? I'm so glad I had the great opportunity to try the limited edition ones. Thank you so much. I have to say, I'm impressed with the green poke Okay, this color, how do you pronounce this? Because every time I try to pronounce this, it comes out as potpourri or something similar around it and I can't get it. Potpourri, see, it, it, it's always a variation on the potpourri, but it's actually dried really nice. It's very, very subtle green that is beautiful, actually. Also, the gouaches have been really interesting. I'm in love with the M. Graham gouache. So M. Graham might win me over still yet. Definitely gonna try the Thalo Blue and Thalo Green further because they create some very interesting textures as they dry. I just wanna say a huge, massive, mahoosive thank you to Shade for being so generous in sharing her paints with me. She was incredibly generous 
both in the number and the amount of paints and the brand core that she has shared with me and also on top of this all the other lovely lovely bits that she has sent me thank you so much i'm so glad we did this swap so what did you think which brands caught your eyes or which co particular colors caught your eyes let me know in the comments down below i will of course label all this with pigment codes and scan them and upload them to my patreon page for my patrons to have a good look at especially these two colors are going to be really interesting to look at close up thank you so much for watching this video i know it was a long one thank you for sticking by with me i hope you enjoyed it i hope you discovered some new colors if you enjoyed this please check out sadie saves the day channel because she goes into so much more technical details than i do and she knows so much more about watercolors than i do i am humbled by her knowledge and i'm also humbled that i get to do a collaboration with her when she uploads her video of the paint i've sent to her then i will also link that video down below there's going to be a lot of links in the description down below today right i'm going i promise thank you so much for watching Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell buttons down here if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video.